I'm glad you're here today. We're going to be starting a new series. And uh, last week we said, and I, I said as we come into 2020, there are some things that God does want for us in 2020 that is clear. And we talked about what's called in Galatians the fruits of the Spirit. You know, having that love and that joy and that peace and that patience that God wants us and believes that we can have for him. But in order to have those things, we have to make sure we have the right foundation in our spiritual life, in our spiritual walk. I mean, it, it, it's a simple concept. I mean, if you're going to go build your dream house, what's the one thing you got to make sure first and foremost is in place correctly? Foundation. If you don't have a good foundation, it ain't going to last long. Spiritually, you know, if we don't have the proper foundation for our life, then it's going to be hard to live out those fruits of the Spirit and, the, and, and uh, what God wants us to live out in our life. So I want to take the next four weeks and I want to go through and making sure as we're in this new year 2020 and going through it and to 21 and 22 and so forth, we have that proper foundation. And today I want to talk about timing. How much timing affects us in our life? I don't think we realize in our life how much timing actually affects us both positively and negatively uh, within our lives. There's so much, so much, you know, it gets accomplished and involves the element of timing, like in, in sports. You know, if you ever watch, I mean, you can have good, watch this little clip here of what happens with some bad timing in baseball. Swings at that pitch just doesn't like to. Bouncer right back off the glove of Friedrich. He's going to have to hurry. Has time, and he threw it away. Cabrera going to second base. Taking the turn, he's going to third. And he'll get there standing up. And it gets away. And a run will score. you got a little league homer. <laughs> now for that player... He loved that timing. It worked out for him. You know, he hits it to the pitcher, and he gets an infield home. Well, I think they classify it as infield home, home, home run that he has, all because of bad timing in other people's throws. So timing, it can affect us negatively or it can affect us positively. And in every aspect, like in business, you know, having, you know, making sure you have the right time when you're going to start your business, when you're going to hire, when you're going to make decisions, are you going to expand? You know, that could make or break a, a, a business. And if you're, you know, a musician, and or you're you know a singer you have to know how to keep time or you're going to struggle when you get up to play the instrument or perform and stuff if you were with us 15 years ago a part of the wcc family we went through what a lot of churches went through we went through a big church-wide campaign going over uh, rick warren's purpose-driven life if you remember that maybe you read the book and heard about that before but we went through that as a big campaign here and one of the things when i started it off or if you read the book it starts off talking about surfing and you know how surfers you know they don't go out and make the waves and that you don't you don't hear them talking about that you don't hear them like get up in the morning and say hey let's go make some waves dude you know they don't get up and they don't talk that way and do it god makes the waves and they go out and they ride the waves and what we've been trying to do here as leadership when we cast vision share vision challenge you and encourage you of where to go we try to look at and say what waves are God creating? Where is God working in our area? What waves is he creating so we can go out and ride those waves? But it has a lot to do with timing. Like I said, going back to the whole surfing aspect and the whole surfing issue, like I don't know if any of you have ever surfed here in that, but the toughest part really in one sense isn't the balance. You know, you can learn the balance, but it's, it's the patience and learning the timing. Because like I said, when you go out, you're sitting on that board a lot more than you think, waiting for the right wave to come in, waiting for that proper wave to come in that you can get on. And then once it comes in, you got to turn your board in, you know, to the beach. And then if you start paddling too quick, the wave's going to come down on top of you. If you start paddling too late, you'll just get, you have to have that right timing. So there's a lot that comes with a lot of skill with it. And the same thing in our spiritual life. Ecclesiastics uh, 8.6 says this. There is a right time, and there's a right way to do everything, but we know so little. You ever thought about that? There's a right way and a right time to do everything, but you and I, we, we just know so little. You see, what this verse is saying to us here is we can get it wrong. We can get it wrong. We can do the right thing in the wrong timing, or we can have the right timing and do it in the wrong way. It takes skill. It takes skill in following God's timing, you know, uh, to follow the Spirit, you know. And, and the awesome thing is that, like anything else, it can be learned, you know. 
there is this rhythm, I think we all, there's this rhythm to life, there's this rhythm to, 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 to leadership, rhythm to love. Uh, people know in that, that there's just this rhythm to life. And when we learn that, when you understand, you learn that skill, that rhythm of when to speed up and when to slow down and all those other kinds of things, that, that's where you can have that blessing. And as we grow as followers of, of Christ, as we get to know him more, as we fall more in love with him, and as we understand uh, that rhythm, if you will, we listen to the Holy Spirit, we walk closer with him, then we can understand when to speed up and when to, to slow down when it comes to that. It, when you look through the scriptures, you're reading through the Bible, it compares life to a race quite a few times. Over and over again, it says we're to run the race, doesn't it? Not jog it. We're to run the race. And if you look at the life of Christ, if you're reading through the Gospels that talk about the life of Christ, so many different times you'll be reading where it says Jesus and the word immediately. You know, and, and, and it'll say something like immediately Jesus did this or immediately Jesus said this or immediately whatever. And that there was an urgency to Jesus' ministry that was there. And, and that urgency he passed on to the apostles. You see a lot of the scriptures like in, in Timothy 6.12, it says, run hard and fast in the faith. Or 1 Corinthians 9.24, run in such a way to get the, as to get the prize. 1 Corinthians 9.26, I love it in the New Living Translation. I run straight to the goal with purpose in every step. In Philippians 3.12, I run to win. So yes, there are times when God wants us to move very, very fast in our life. And I know what some of you are thinking right now. Dave, I don't like to run. <laughs> You've lost me already because you're talking about running. Hey, 10 fingers, 10 toes, point your fingers at me. I agree, okay? Now, I, I'm not making fun of anybody who runs, all right? If you love to run, good for you. I just can't wrap my mind around the concept. There's things I do like, you know, wear Hawaiian shirts or short, short, short sleeve shirts on a day like today. You can't wrap your mind around it, okay? But I can't wrap my mind around why somebody would purposely get up and think, I'm going to go for a run. <laughs> I'm going to run 5K today without somebody trying to hurt you. Okay? I don't understand that. And me at my stage in life, this is how much I hate running. Even if somebody is trying to hurt me, I don't care. I'm just going to turn and face you. All right? Because I don't want to run. I don't like running. But yet there are times God says, look it, you got to move fast. And he's not always talking about physically running, you know? But he says, there are times in your life you just need to move fast. And what I want to do right now is I want to pull out a, preacher, a preacher's uh, prerogative, okay? Because as I gave this outline to Scarlett and as I started uh, preparing and planning, if you look at your notes there, you're going to see a lot. And I realized I was trying to get through too much here today. So if you're a type A personality, I apologize now we're not going to fill in every blank. <laughs> okay, so that might leave you a little shaky right now and a little hard and difficult, but that's okay. Come back next week and we will fill out the second half. What I want to do today is I want to answer the question today. When should you and I then in 2020, when should we move fast? When does God want us to move fast in this year of 2020? And the next Sunday we'll come back and we'll learn when does God want us to move slow? Because there are times that he definitely says, you need to move and you need to move now. And there's times he's like, nah, hit the brake, stop, quiet, slow. So when are those times and how do we know? I mean, if we want to have that proper foundation, that life, that faith that God has for us and, and everything, it, it's a very important thing for us to learn. So when in 2020, let's dive into this here, you know, when should we do that? And realize this is not going to be an exhaustive list of the scriptures. Uh, if I did that, I'd probably be in a 52-week series here uh, when it came down to it. But these are what I believe to be key issues, key ones that God talks about. So first of all, first of all, you and I should move fast in 2020 when God tells us to do something. When God tells us to do something, we need to be on it. We need to get on that. I mean, when you look at the scripture, he's, there's several things he's telling. We call them instructions or we call them commands. You know, God gives us these instructions of what to do. And here's the thing that sometimes I think we forget about or, or we don't realize or we get confused. God expects us to obey these instructions. God expects us to obey these commands. I mean, those of you who are parents, and even those of you who aren't, I, you could probably understand this, but parents, what if you went to your child and you said, hey, you asked him, you said, I would like you to do this, please. So you've asked them nicely, you've asked them property, but you've given them an instruction and you've given them a command. I would like you to do this, please. And they looked at you and said, thanks, mom and dad. I'll think about it. 
I hear the giggling because you know what's going to happen. You know, parents, what are you going to say? No, I don't think you're going to think about it. You're going to do it and you're going to do it when? Yeah. You're going to do it and you're going to do it now from that aspect with it. It's not a choice. I'm not giving you. It's not multiple choice. It's not, hey, no, you're going to do it and do it. And, but how many times do we do this in our life, in our walk with God? How many times do we do that to him? And every parent learns this and knows this, that delayed disobedience, or excuse me, delayed obedience is disobedience. Delayed obedience is disobedience. And the same thing is true with God. When God says, look it, I want you to do this because this is going to be a blessing. I'm asking you to do this. Here's a commandment to follow. And we say, oh, okay, thanks, God. I'll, I'll think about it. At that point, it's no different. We've just become disobedient in our walk in our life with God with God. And God says, no, I want you to be moving. I want you to do it, and I want you to do it now. And, and Mark, and there's a good example of it in Mark 1, 17 to 18. Jesus said to them, come follow me. So Simon and Andrew, notice the next word, immediately left their nets and followed him. Now you've probably read this yourself maybe, or you've heard this taught on maybe before. What they're actually doing here, what are they doing? They're walking away from their careers. They are walking away from their fishing business. They are walking away from their jobs. And the Bible tells us they did it at, at their convenience, right? No, they did it immediately. When God asks us to do something, that's, we do it immediately. And I, I love what the psalmist said in the 119th Psalm, verse 60. Without delay, I hurry to obey your command. Without delay, I hurry to obey your command. And I know in today's world that we live, I understand the word hurry is not a positive word, okay? It's actually a negative, maybe even a bad word, because you never want to be in a hurry. You know, slow down, you know, enjoy life. I, I understand that, but that's not what this is talking about here, when I'm talking about being in a hurry. I mean, people say, oh, people who are hurried are often worried. That's not what I'm applying here. When it comes to being obedient to what God has asked us to do, hurry is actually a very good quality, a good thing, you know? I want to be in a hurry to do what God has told me to do. And the moment God tells me to do it is when I want to start doing it. So here's a good question to ask yourself is, we're 12 days into to this new year. Has God asked you to do anything that you haven't done yet? Has God told you to do something that maybe you haven't done yet? Maybe he started telling you last year, last summer, maybe even a year before. I don't know what that is. You know, has God been working on you? Say, like, well, you know who I am. You need to, you need to step forward and make that 100% commitment to me, you know, and, 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 and make that profession of faith. Maybe even do like, you know, what, what you saw Aaron do last Sunday. You know, enter the waters of baptism and, and, and do that. I don't know. Maybe God's sitting there and he says, hey, I kind of really would like you to start reading these love letters I've given you called my Bible, spending more time in my word. I know it's been a blessing. Uh, three years ago, we started emailing out and giving out, you know, reading these reading plans so you could read through the Bible in the year and that and encouraging you and challenging people to kind of read through God's word. And it's been so neat to hear with people. It's like, wow, I didn't realize that. I didn't know God said that. You're right. There's these promises I didn't realize there was in there, you know. And, and I love how people haven't become legalistic with it. They just got this plan, and they're attempting to read, like I said, these love letters and the blessing that's come. And maybe that's what God said. Hey, maybe pick it up and, and start reading. Or maybe God is saying to you, you know what? I really want to challenge you this year to actually step out and believe that I can supply all your needs according to my riches and glory. You know, and, and test me. It's the one area God says to test. Test me. Start giving financially given and trust me and, and, and see what happens. Or maybe, maybe he's told you to invite that friend, that coworker, that neighbor to come to ISI, to come to Men's Night Out, to come to Women's Bunko, see how I threw that in there, to come to those things, to come to church with you and that. And whatever that is, you know, God says, move fast when God tells me to do something. I want to do that. I think you get the point, so I'll move on. <laughs> Number two, Number two, you and I should move fast when I need to ask or offer forgiveness. We need to move fast when we need to ask for or offer for forgiveness in our lives. And there's a lot of reasons for us to do this, a lot of good reasons for us to want to do this. But one of the greatest reasons to do this is because of our health. Medical research, clinical research has shown over the years time and time and time again, these bodies were not made to hold on to things like resentment and worry, and shame, and guilt, and bitterness. We just weren't created for that. 
you know, at all. That's why God had given us this tool, this outlet called forgiveness, where we can either go give forgiveness or we can ask for forgiveness so we don't hold on. Because if we're holding on to all those things I just mentioned, it's the same thing as picking up a glass of poison and drinking it. The same thing happens to our body. Literally, we're eating ourselves and killing ourselves from the inside out. God says, no. This is something you need to rush on. This is something you need to work on. It's not that it's going to be easy, but when you do, when you get that down, and, and that's your part. You may go and ask for forgiveness. Now, if the person doesn't want to give you forgiveness, that's, that's their responsibility. You do what God has called and asked and instructed you to do, and that's where you get the freedom to know, hey, I asked for forgiveness. I truly went and biblically did what God has called me to do. They don't want to forgive me. I'm sorry for that, but that's their choice. You know, that's their choice. But you go do them with God, and that helps bring a healing. And I mean, this is such an important thing for us to do. Listen to the instruction that's given in Matthew 5, starting verse 23. If you're giving an offering at worship, and suddenly you remember that someone has something against you, leave your offering and go immediately to that person and be reconciled. Then you can come back to worship and offer your gift. That's because doing this, asking or giving forgiveness is actually an act of worship. And God knows how important it is for us within our life. So, I mean, if I'm ever up here and I'm preaching and God's Spirit moves in you and convicts you to do something and you know it needs to be immediate, you're not going to offend me if you get up and say, I got to go and I got to do it now and just walk out. All right? Now, for some of you, that's not a reason to leave early, okay? Because <laughs> I will question you later whether, no, I won't. But you know what, that's what I'm saying. That's the importance of it, to understand how important it is to do this and, and, and to do it now, you know? Not to, not to be waiting for that. So as you look at 2020, as you look at life, as you look at where you're at, as you look at your relationships, is there anybody you need to reconcile with or to forgive? God says, let's not wait till next week or next month or next year, you know? Let's move fast in this area. Let's work on doing it now. And the third thing the Bible says that you and I should move fast on is when we feel tempted, you know? When you and I feel tempted, we should move out of the situation rapidly, okay? In fact, if, if, if you want to defeat temptation, you, you need to have both the, you know, preventative tactics to keep you from being tempted, but you also need to have emergency tactics for when you fall into the situation. And I want to talk just a second about the emergency tactics. When you're in the moment and all of a sudden you realize that you're tempted to do something that you know is going to be self-defeating or not God-honoring, here's what you do. You do not argue with temptation. Now, why would I say that? You do not argue with temptation. You don't do that because you're going to lose the argument. I don't care how good of an argue you are. I don't care how good of a debater you are. You have maybe won every argument that there's ever been. There's been no lawyer that's been as good as you have. There's been no debater on the face of this earth. You will lose when it comes to temptation because, my friend, Satan has been arguing for thousands of years longer than you. And if you try to argue with your conscience, with the devil, or anything else, we will lose. See, the Bible tells us to overcome. The key to overcoming temptation is not to resist it, but to what? Run from it. To run from it. So, you know, simply put... Uh, I mean, on the simplest level, if, if maybe you go to the doctor and you find out you got some health issues and they want you to eat better and all that other kind of stuff and stay away from certain foods and eat other certain foods, you know, and, and all that other kind of stuff. And so you flip on the TV and you got the TV on and, and all of a sudden comes that burger commercial. And there's that burger that just, per and you know, they never make it that way at the restaurants, you know. But it's perfectly made with the juice coming down in the, you know, 18 slabs of bacon that you'll get two in the restaurant, but 18 that are on there, and you're looking and drew. Change the channel. I mean, that seems so simple, but change the channel when it comes to it. You know, I, I don't know what you're struggling with with it. Maybe you're struggling with lust, guys and gals. You know, and, and you're watching, again, I'll pick on TV since I started there. You're watching TV, and here comes that commercial, you know, for the new Top Gun movie that's coming out. Yep, new Top Gun movie. They're going to have another volleyball scene with the guys having their shirts off, and they're all cut and buff. Woo! You know, ladies, you can't handle it. Don't watch it, you know, and that kind of stuff. And they make out a new Baywatch. Guys, you can't handle it. Don't watch it. I'm not saying there's anything wrong with looking at a man or a woman and thinking that, you know, they're nice looking or something along. That's not what I'm talking about. You know, but you know what I'm talking about when I just painted those pictures and that aspect on it. Click the TV. 
change it. And again, that seems so simplistic. That seems so simplistic. But when I said before, it doesn't always mean physically <laughs> that you're getting up and literally physically running. You just change that channel or you've shut the thing off. You're running from it. You're running from it when it comes to that aspect on it. And you see, the Bible says in 1 Timothy 6.11, run from all what? Evil things. Run from it. Move fast. Don't just casually walk away from temptation. 1 Corinthians 10.14 says, run away from the worship of idols. And maybe you're sitting there thinking, well, you, I got you on this one, Dave, because I don't have some big statue sitting in my office or some big statue in my home or some big statue in my lawn that I bow down to and all of that. Maybe you don't, but let me kind of rephrase what that passage is saying, and let me ask you this, okay? Who or what do you idolize? Who or what do you idolize? Do you idolize success? Beauty? A sport? Social media? Anything that we put above God becomes an idol in our lives, and the Bible says run away from that run away from it. It also tells us, you know, to get away as fast as we can. And it says in 1 Corinthians 6, 18, run away from sexual sin. You know, don't just kind of, well, I'm going to think about it. I mean, if you don't want to get stung by the bees, what do you do? You get away from the hive. I saw this illustration and that, you know, it, again, the simplicity of it sometimes seems so simple. But you and your family decide to go have a picnic. You sit down at a picnic table, and here's this nice tree next to you. You don't notice it when you first get there, but then all of a sudden this bee comes buzzing around, and you hear these bees, and you look up, and there's a big beehive. And, you know, one starts coming over, and you notice there's four or five that are kind of buzzing around. And because of the noise of you and the kids and everybody laughing around in the movement, it's starting to get them a little mad. And the four to five went to 15 or 20. And the couple that came down now is maybe five that are buzzing around. What are you, are you going to sit there and go, yeah, they're up to 50 or 60. I'm going to wait and see. I'm just going to sit here casually and see what happens with that hive that's getting louder and louder and more and more. And, or are you going to leave? If you're smart, you're going to move your picnic someplace. If you don't want to get stung, you're going to leave. And that's exactly what we're talking. Again, that sounds and seems so simple. And that's what God is saying when it comes to this temptation. You do it and you do it immediately. If you stick around, there's that possibility you're going to get stung. Number four. I should move fast this next year when I've made a promise to God. When I've made a promise to God. Because delayed promise is an unfulfilled promise. And, and I think in different times for different reasons, different, we all make promises to God. And sometimes, you know, I know what happens to me. I kind of make it like a New Year's resolution or I treat it like a New Year's resolution. I either forget it or I just kind of get lazy about it. But the scripture, again, in Ecclesiastics 5.4 says this. When you make a promise to God, keep it as quickly as possible possible. So again, here we are 12 days into 2020, you know, what, have you, what promise do you need to fulfill for God right now, this week, you know, I don't know, what, what is that? Do you need to pick up that phone, you know, and make a call? What do you, share your faith with somebody? Have you made a promise to read? I don't know what that is, you know, I made a promise that I'm going to serve these days, I don't know, but do it, do it now. Number five, I should move fast when I have the opportunity to do good. We've talked about this several times. I actually did a six-week series on this about four years ago about the good opportunities that are always uh, before us. And the Bible says this over and over and over, that when I see an opportunity to do something good for somebody else, I should not delay. I shouldn't procrastinate. I shouldn't wait. I shouldn't think about it. I should move fast, and I should do it immediately. Because every single day, God gives us the opportunities to practice what we talked about last week, the fruits of the Spirit. To take and put those things that He knows is possible for us to do in 2020 and to put them into practice today. Every single day, He gives us that. Whether it's a physical need, an emotional need, a need for encouragement, a need for a word of kindness. He gives us these little opportunities all the time. And God says, as you're going, do something about it. You know, when you have the opportunity, Proverbs 3.27 says this, Do not withhold good from those who deserve it while it is in your power to act. I've heard this called the Nike verse before in Proverbs 3.27. Just do it. <laughs> Just simply do it. But I know what the struggle is because I've said these exact same things. And, and, and the temptation for us, I know what we end up telling ourselves. I know what we use to convince ourselves not to do it immediately. We say this, well, when things settle down, 
You ever said that? You ever thought, you ever heard something? You know, when things settle down, right now at work we got this big project going and I'm pulling 70, 80 hours a week with it. When things settle down, yeah, then I can come help with the youth or then I can go do this project or then I can pick up the Bible and read because I'll have more time. Well, when I get that raise, things will settle down. You know, I'm working towards that raise and I don't have more money to give. Or when I get that or when I have whatever, when things settle down, then I can do what I need to do, whatever, and you fill in the blank or whatever that looks like or whatever that sounds like within your life. But but what have we learned and what do we know about things settling down? They don't settle down, do they? And Scripture confirms that. Scripture reminds us. Scripture challenges that. Again, in Ecclesiastes 11.4, if you wait for the perfect conditions, you'll never get anything done. <laughs> Amen? Amen? You'll never get anything done if you wait for the perfect conditions. You know? I, I understand that there are certain things that have better timing than others. Okay? You don't want to get married when you're 12. Probably not good timing in that aspect. You don't want to have a baby when you're 15. I understand those kind of aspects, but I'm talking about spiritually here, you know? When it comes to things like, you know, our, our spiritual development, when it comes to, like, reading the Bible, when it comes to, like you've heard me say here today, getting involved in ministry, uh, you know, being involved within ministry, you're never going to get anything done if you wait to that perfect, perfect time because there are never perfect conditions on this planet. And there's a reason that, that these things that we're talking about, that God says, listen, I want you to do these, and I want you to do them immediately. There actually is a reason behind them asking us to run the race and to do these things so quickly and not to wait, not to procrastinate, not to wait till there's better conditions. And, and that Jesus said this in, in John 9, 4. All of us must quickly carry out the tasks assigned to us by the Father who sent me because there's little time left before the night falls, and all work will come to an end. My friends, basically, you know, you're not guaranteed. I'm not, we're not guaranteed tomorrow, much less next week or next year. And I don't mean to be morbid about it, but it's a reality, is it not? It's a reality, and some of us can testify to that in here. I, I say this all the time and, and everything because, you know, in my line and in, in, in what God has called me to do here, I see this happening, and my family even experienced this before Christmas. You know, I, I tell people, life, it is a gift from God. People don't realize whether they believe in God or not, but life is a gift from God. And he gives it to us one second at a time. He never promises that next second to come. And have you ever heard, maybe you've experienced, maybe you know, literally, people are here one second and the next second gone. Like I said, I've experienced that in ministry so much. And over thank or Thanksgiving, over Christmas, my wife, I appreciate all the prayers, my wife and I and my family, you know, when my mom's brother, my Uncle Tom, you know, he's going through his Saturday night routine before Christmas, or Sunday night routine, his nightly routine uh, that he's going through, you know, he's in the kitchen getting things ready, spoiling his dog Precious, that he spoiled way too much, we found out, you know, but he's in there getting the dog, he's in the kitchen getting things ready, getting ready to go to bed, and he's standing in the kitchen, he comes walking from the kitchen into the living room, like that massive heart attack, he's gone. One second he's alive, the next second he's gone. That's how precious the gift of life is, and that's how quickly, and that's why God said, these are why things you need to be about in understanding your purpose. These are why these things are immediate, and you need to be about it, not tomorrow, not next week, not, but today is why you need to be about that. You know, I mean, I'm not saying it's not good to plan. You know, to plan about the college you want to go to, to plan about the career that you want to have. But we should never ever forget the purpose for why we are here. I can never preach it enough. The purpose is not the career you're going to have. The purpose is not your sports team. The purpose is not your retirement and where you want to retire. The purpose is to live for God. To know God, to fall in love God, to give our life to God, to live for God and make sure others know about it. That's the only reason we're here. Now, you may have a career that's great. You may have a job that you love to do. That's great. God may create you with these gift, talents, and abilities you are doing. That's wonderful. But while you're doing it, that's the purpose why you're at that job. You're at that job to live for God. You're at that job to be the salt and the light. That's why you're there. It's the only reason why you and I are here. And that's hard sometimes. We forget that that's our purpose. That's why these things are so immediate. When, you, when someone wrongs you, and you forgive them? What does the world say? The world would understand if somebody did something horrible to you and, and you didn't forgive them. And we talked about this before. How many times have you heard me say that? But then if you turn around, and I'm not saying you let them continue to do horrible things to you, 
It's not what I'm saying. But you forgive them, they're going to look at you and like, what? How could you? What an opportunity to let God's light shine. I can't, but the reason I am is because of this. The reason I love, you're going to do what? The reason I do it is because this. And we do that, and we do it immediately, and we do it for God immediately, my friends. That's the importance of doing it quickly. You know, what God says there. We're not promised. Don't know how long our gift of life is, but we've got a God that's a good God that loves us and is willing to be there as long as we have that life. And that's an awesome thing. And the last thing I want to share as the worship team comes up here, the last thing I want to uh, remind us of, the last thing I want to encourage you and challenge you as we continue to worship this God that, that has these wonderful things that he's asked us to do is you and I need to move quickly when God offers us salvation. When God offers us that salvation, when we understand the gift of his son, Jesus Christ, we need to move quickly with that and accepting that. And if you don't understand that, that's okay. But if you have questions or you're wondering again, Dave, you talked about being baptized. What in the world is that about? You know, what, 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 what does that have to do? You, you talk about this public profession of faith. You talk about salvation. You know, I'm using these big church words sometimes with it. If you don't know what that means, that's okay. But today, start asking what it means. We have information on the bulletin there that you can talk with people, our leadership and stuff that's here that love to talk to people about and help you understand, to know what that means, you know, to know what God has asked for us and, and to know and, and why we do what we do here and to explain that and walk through that life with you. But today, today is the day. And we're going to take some time right now and as, as we're going to go and, and as the worship team, like I said, is going to be leading us, continue to lead us in worship. And, and we're going to have some time for you just to where you're se seating right now. If you're joining us for the first time here today, the way we practice communion is while they're worshiping, when you're ready, and that will have the emblems uh, that are going to be at the two side tables or at the back. When you're ready, you can go up and partake of, of those and then come back and you can sit or you can stand and continue to worship whatever you feel comfortable. But I always like to encourage you during this time as we reflect, as we remember on the gift of God's Son and the salvation that that brings to us and the importance that that means for us each and every day of our lives, not just while we're here this Sunday, but what that means each and every day. You know, take this time and let God's Holy Spirit talk to you. Are there areas of your life that you need to start acting on today, you know? Is there somebody you need to make a call to? Is there something you need to step up? And God said, look, it, I want you to start doing it. Is there a way you've been looking at it and saying, are there parts of your life you can look and say, oh, okay, God, I'll think about that. And God brought you here today. Say, no, don't think about it. Do it. Do it. Let his spirit speak to you. And if there's a decision you want to make, if there's people you want to talk with, whatever, if there's a decision you want or prayer you need today, I'll be up front. Come on up here, and we will pray for you. We will pray with you and be a part and celebrate that decision, whatever it is. Or like I said, there's information in the bulletin so we can be about doing what God wants us to do, not next week, well, next week, but get it started today and so it can continue through our lives. Let's go before God. Father, I thank you for this time that we can be in your presence and be reminded and be encouraged and be challenged by your word. And I thank you that there are these things, Heavenly Father, that you ask us to do. Lord, forgive us at the times that maybe we don't understand or, or we have forgotten or whatever, Lord Jesus. We're just not, just not being about it the way that we need to, Father. I thank you for this time we can come in your presence and let your Holy Spirit speak to us as we just give thanks for your son Christ and the salvation that's offered to us, the gift of life, the gift of eternity that's offered because of what your son has done, Lord. And as we partake of these emblems and we reflect that and we remember that and we celebrate that, Father, may your spirit speak to our hearts. Is, help us to see, Father God, is there areas of our lives where we need to start being a little more intentional, be a lot more immediate, start working today. Father, I pray for that kind of wisdom, that kind of understanding, that kind of truth to fill our hearts, Lord. And not that we just know it, but today, Father God, fill us with the wisdom and the strength to know how to do that, Lord. Thanks that we could be in your presence gathering here, just worshiping together. And for this time that we could reflect, Father God, we praise you for this so much. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen.